Michael Rogowski says, do you see AI affecting physical makers? Yeah. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen. I am. I really don't. But it's pretty clear to me that AI is going to change everything. Um, you know, it's 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 changing what we think about artwork. It's it's altering what we how we talk about copyright, which is great. We are long overdue culturally for a a, a an actual good com good and balanced conversation about what copyright is and what for the greater good actually means. Um, but how AI might affect physical makers is an interesting, an interesting question. Sorry, I've just got to. Um, so uh, I don't actually have like an example of how I think AI might affect what I make uh, or how I make it, but I'm really positive it's it's going to come online. Um, and it's exciting and it's scary. Tom Scott, uh, who I love, a longtime YouTube, YouTuber and wonderful science communicator, did a video a few weeks ago about how he asked ChatGPT to write a low-level program for him. And it did well enough to spook the hell out of him and made him feel like, wow, I haven't felt this much of a sea change about things going on since Napster since the beginnings of the internet, as it were. And I, I really agree with him. I think it's exactly like that. I wish I had a better example to give you or more of a thought process, but I've just been really watching this and I haven't, I haven't yet really got a point of view on it. Just, yeah, I mean, I don't think the world has a point of view on it. I think we're all sort of wondering how this is gonna go. Um, <laughs> Uncouth J, this is a great question. What has been your most terrifying, I'm not 100% sure about this, machining setup? It's a doozy. Uh, I was doing a commercial for Perrier, for Perrier, the, the, the sparkling water. And in the ad, we needed this hero shot of a bottle of Perrier, and we needed it to fill up with Perrier like this, whoop, like that fast. So here would be the bottle of Perrier, and we go whoop, and just fill up. So how do you make something do that? What we did was we we uh, this was this is the early '90s. I'm working in Jamie Heineman's shop, uh, so uh, we cut a large hole out of the bottom of the Perrier bottle. In fact, it was the largest hole you could cut out of the bottom without seeing that hole, right? So it was just past the, the return on the inside of that, of that lip. And the goal was to set up a bottle and drill a hole in there. Now, hold on, I'm gonna show you what I used to do it. Um, holes and... Yeah, da, da. yeah. Oh. <laughs> <You're>, <laughs> this, this is going to appall you when I show you how I drilled the hole in the bottom of this Perrier bottle. So uh, Jamie says, well, I was trying to drill a hole in the bottle of the Perrier bottle, uh, in the bottom of the Perrier bottle. And the methodology was I used a drill press. I succeeded at this, by the way. I used a drill press, but you you absolutely can't just take a drill bit <clears throat> and drill into a bottle of Perrier. Glass is, glass is actually harder than high-speed steel, but it's harder on the hardness scale. It's High-speed steel isn't gonna bite into the glass. It's gonna overheat and work harden and make a little shiny spot, that's it. Um, so you can take carbide steel <coughs> and scratch into the glass. And so what I, Jamie gave me was a, a carbide insert that I ground very thin and put on the end of one of these. Now this is a hole cutter that chucks into the drill press here and spins like this. And, uh, and it has this center drill so that it can actually center in something and have a little bit of a stabilizer while this outer cutter here does all the heavy lifting. 
Unfortunately, on the bottle, I couldn't do that. I couldn't use this. So I had to remove this piece, the drill bit, and just have this spinning, slowly carving into the bottle. Now, how do you hold on to a bottle when it's undergoing that much abuse? And remember, these bottles are molded at the factory, but they're not like perfectly radially symmetrical at all by a factor of probably 15 to 20 thousandths of an inch, like, like six or seven sheets of paper. Like that's the variance between the parts of the bottle. So there's no like smooth surface you're gonna get to for doing this. So here's how I held onto the bottles. Uh, because it had a little bit of a, a taper on the bottom, I cut a hole that press fit onto that taper. Then I cut another piece of plywood with a hole that press fit onto the taper of the neck of the bottle. And I used uh, four all thread, four pieces of all thread and long bolts to slowly tighten these two pieces of plywood until they held this bottle as tightly as they could. And then I clamped this whole arrangement to the table and used plumbing tape to further like lock everything down on the drill press. And then I chucked in this whole saw. I'm still getting chills thinking that I did this and that I succeeded at it. And then I started basically scraping into this bottle. <clears throat> First of all, it's the worst noise in the world. It's like this, this like high pitched squeal that went right into your soul. And, uh, but on the, on the positive side, it took hours. <laughs> This is such, this is like one of the worst, it was a rough day. Um, and going really, really slow, like the barest amount of pressure. It's just scrape, scrape, scrape. I'm constantly pouring water on it to cool down the steel and to pull up the, the glass that the, that the carbide bit is scraping. Um, it took about three hours, I think. And I succeeded in popping a hole through the bottom of the Perrier bottle. And then Jamie said, rightfully so, we don't want to be left with a single hero bottle for this commercial. We need a backup. And this is totally true. Commercial special effects, you always need a backup. You always want a plan B. You don't want to make one bottle and then drop it. And then what are you going to do? Tell production to sit on their ass for five hours while you drill another hole in the bottom of the bottle? No, that is definitely not going to work. And they're not going to like that. So... After I succeeded in using this to carve a hole in the bottom of Bloody Perrier bottle, I had to do a second one. And amazing, the second one took me four tries. The first one, I got it on the first try. The second one took me another day and a half to succeed at. I kept on breaking at the last minute. Once it's starting to break through, it's when you're the most vulnerable. And a man, I mean, so you've already spent three hours slowly getting going, and then on the very last second, the bottle shatters. And that is really kind of like when you find out whether you love or hate commercial special effects, because that is your turn in the barrel, man. You just got to suffer through that, and you got to load up another bottle. No one cares that it's a pain in the ass or that it's ruining your day. You just got to deliver that backup. What's really funny is I spent all that time on the backup, and we ended up making three, uh, no, we ended up making two because one was a reference for the plate that we were shooting. And then because the bottles are so each different than themselves, this bottle turned 180 degrees in the commercial. And when it turned, you could see the shape of the bottle undulate because glass bottles are not perfectly radially symmetrical. And you could see that on camera. And that meant the DP was like, we can't use the other bottle for the stand-in because it's not the same shape as the Hero. So I had to then take the Hero bottle once we'd gotten all our plates with it and actually take off the label, spray paint it, and put a grid on it so that we could use it for a plate. But drilling a hole in the bottom of that was the hardest, one of the hardest things I have ever done. Now, Good shake, sweetie. Now, I know a much better way. Um, let's see here, where is it? Where is it? Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, these. These uh, opposing helix carbide Dremel bits will carve through glass. And especially in a nice stable Dremel, like the new one I just bought that goes to 25,000 RPM. I, um, 
I will try and do a demo of this. I can't do it right now because I'm not set up to do it. It's such a good question though, I wanna do it. Um, I bought these because I was at a flea market and the guy selling them was writing his name in cursive through the glass of a wine glass. And I was like, what? Like, and now if I needed to drill a hole in the bottom of a Perrier bottle, I think I could do it in about 10 minutes as opposed to two days of constant, awful, horrendous noise. In fact, actually, I may try and do that next week as a, as a one day show and as a show and tell. Um, because it's pretty spectacular. Uh, I am never again going to attempt to cut into glass using one of these tools. That is by far one of the jankiest things. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support us even further, you can by becoming a tested member. Uh, details are of course below, but it includes all sorts of perks and we're building them all the time. You get advanced word and behind the scenes photos of some of our projects questions, you get to ask direct questions during my live streams, and we have some members only videos, including the Adam real-time series of unbroken, unedited shots of me working here in the shop. They are weirdly meditative. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you on the next one.